the complete violinist. I'd like to talk about a holistic approach to being a violinist and aspiring to be an all-round musician and artist. I was chuffed to receive a reference from the fine British violinist Hugh Bean after I was a student, describing me as a cultivated musician. That was a real compliment to me. I believe you acquire a sound technique to be at the service of the music, otherwise it could be said to be acrobatics. The first thing is that your body is your instrument. It takes fine awareness to use your body well, in good alignment, balancing the violin and coordinating your limbs asymmetrically, being based on either your heels or your sitting bones, with the aim of being free to express the music. There are many qualities needed as a performer, including mental and psychological skills. In the words of Heifetz, the nerves of a bullfighter and the concentration of a Buddhist monk. There is a pyramidal or tripartite relationship between the composer as primary creator at the top of the pyramid, the performers as a channel to transmit the music with the responsibility to realise the composer's intentions and the broad base of audience receiving the sounds and returning energy. It's an exchange where each one needs the other. In order to be an ideal conduit for the notes, the violinist has to have a reliable technique in place as a means. But so much more in order to have a musical understanding and contextual appreciation. It's then, with that rich foundation and an inner emotional warmth and love of music, that you're in a position to have a personal voice as an artist. Maybe because I've worked closely with so many living composers on new works and from making my own arrangements of a few works, it makes me think in this way for the ones who are no longer available to ask. It seems so obvious to me that I'm surprised when I hear works performed where attention is not given to the precise detail offered in the score. Take Elgar's music, so carefully notated, or a work like Debussy Violin Sonata of 1917 with so much interesting detail in those 12 minutes, giving the character. Tempi, subtle changes of dynamics, articulation, dolce sostenuto, dolce espressivo, poco marcato, en serrant, etc. And that's just the first page. Know what all the words mean. I was once caught out by Sylvia Rosenberg, whose graduate assistant I became at the Eastman School of Music when I was Fulbright Fellow to New York not knowing what morbidezza means in Saint-Saëns' introduction of Rondo Capriccioso. <laughs> but it's not just the score and the importance of knowing the form and architecture. I think to be a complete artist, you need to relate the musical work to the other arts and know other works by that composer and their contemporaries. The other two Debussy sonatas and string quartet, for example, the songs, piano pieces and orchestral works with their colours, the paintings, poetry such as Baudelaire and the symbolists, theatre, the history happening around that time and so on. If you have an awareness of French painting, not just Impressionist, but in the second decade of the 20th century, French cuisine, perfume, language, even though music transcends words, you'll have more feeling for the French sensibility, sensibilité, inherent in this work, and a better chance of getting to the heart or essence of the music. Or even seeing the costumes of the time to understand, say, the elegance of Mozart and the pacing of dances and opera, one of my passions. There are so many opportunities in London and other major cities for students to go to concerts and opera cheaply, or galleries for free, it's all a balance, of course, but I'd say do an hour less practice sometimes and make the most of this culture. You'll learn so much more. Last year, I was very pleased to be invited to China for the first time to be the first Westerner to join distinguished judges from conservatoires throughout China for the Western International Strings Competition. The standard was good, but I was sorry that no one played with piano accompaniment. There are so many gifted pianists there. And in Beijing, where I gave a, a violin masterclass, 
Students brought works such as a Beethoven sonata for piano and violin with no pianist, so I did my best to play a bit of piano or the piano part on violin. It's so important to have and to know the complete work and score, listening, interacting and making music with others. I've learnt so much from performing a great deal with piano over many years, comparing the nature of our articulation in answering phrases with violin, being attentive to piano tuning and much else. The same goes, of course, with working with an orchestra, other instruments or singers from whom one can glean so much about breathing, phrasing and tone. The other aspect I've been surprised about is young violinists not really knowing the harmony or having a strong enough feel for the rhythm. I remember giving a masterclass on Beethoven Romance in F and to try and help with intonation in a few places, I asked the student what key or chord it was at that place and found they couldn't say. I'm so glad I started off on the piano and with studying music theory concurrently because it provides such a good musical grounding and that I studied music history and so on in my music degree courses as a performer. Another time I was helping a student violinist in a class prepare for a performance of the Bach E major preludio and she was having trouble with the memory so I asked if she knew the main tonal centres and we found that helped a lot because when you have a clear picture of the structure inherent in Bach, not just memory of the notes, fingerings, and visual and tactile memory. Similarly, when you practice arpeggios, dominant sevenths, etc., it's helpful to think about the keys, notes, intervals, not just mechanical patterns, and to relate this up to pieces you're working on. It will also help with sight reading, being quick to see the keys, and to be adept at this vital skill, you need to have a good pulse and be able to divide up beats into all the various inner rhythms whilst maintaining this beat. It can be helpful to walk the beats, feeling the space in movement between them and clapping the rhythms. With some very complicated contemporary music uh, pieces, I've found it helpful to work away from the violin, deciphering the, the rhythms intellectually first. It's all part of the rich tapestry and discovery of life as a violinist and I hope as an artist. Finally, I'd advocate taking inspiration from nature, as many composers and poets have, rather than looking at a screen so much as I hope we'll all do in the beautiful gardens of Dartington or the wonderful view of the sea from the train on the way to Devon and having time to breathe.